Across banking, artificial intelligence is creating tremendous opportunities to improve efficiencies and operations. In compliance, where increasing requirements can lead to rising costs, machine learning is helping share the load. AI is also improving the effectiveness in the fight against financial crime by offering large data sets that can quickly be analyzed. So, to explore how much AI is already being used in compliance, I'm joined by Sela Franzen, Group Chief Data Scientist at SEB, and David Hardoon, Special Advisor, Artificial Intelligence at the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Welcome to you both to Cybos TV. Uh, I'm going to start with Salah. Now, you're both appearing at the Cybos conference session, looking at the application of artificial intelligence in this field. But how is AI augmenting compliance practices? Yeah, I mean, this is one of my favorite areas in the world. And uh, I can just see so many benefits of using um, new kinds of techniques um, in monitoring and, and sort of compliance work. I mean, one of the things that, that we've been working on quite hard is improving data quality by using machine learning algorithms. Um, instead of doing the manual stuff that you did in the 70s, um, we can really try to bring everything into the future instead. And then, of course, um, I mean, our clients don't meet us um, uh, physically anymore. They meet us much more digitally. And then it's important for us to be able to understand their behaviors in the, the digital landscape as well. So much has changed, even in a short few years. What are the challenges, would you say, to the industry that the industry is facing? And, and why is now the right time for AI? Um, I think AI, the right time is now, because uh, technology is there. Um, we have the technology, we have the data. Um, researchers have been working on, on the finding new techniques and, and doing really heavy base research for years and years. So, I mean, AI has been around for 50 years in a ther theoretical perspective, but now that we have the technology, we can really release the power of that. David, uh, what are some of the real-life applications of AI in financial crime prevention? Well, we're already seeing quite a significant use of AI, leveraging on existing financial data as well as the more new types of data across fraud detection to really help make it seamless in real time. But it goes beyond just banking. For example, even within the central bank, in the Monetary Authority of Singapore, we've built an AI-based solution called Apollo, which is leveraging on market data, transactional data, to identify market manipulation. Then, just to give a last example, things which, uh, well, is a bit of a pain for all of us, but it's extremely important on know your customer, customer due diligence, leveraging artificial intelligence to really be able to identify who the customers are. So what are the, the big opportunities ahead for AI in compliance? And where will we see the greatest benefit, do you think? Well, that's a, it's a bit of a difficult question. But if I could say, there's two key areas where I say there's, there's great opportunity. And perhaps even both of them are a bit un, 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 not usual to a certain extent. Well, the first one is, well, regulatory uh, uh, requirements, uh, legal implication, uh, quite tedious, they're quite lengthy. So in fact, there's immense opportunity in leveraging an AI to analyze that and provide potential standards, both from an implementation point of view, as well as creating uh, bite-sized, human-readable uh, interpretations of these for people across the organization to use it. Secondly, and this is a bit to the core of the organization, is how do we shift from an audit-based approach, leveraging an eye on the data for either real-time or near real-time, identifying non-compliance. So moving from audit to preventive, effectively. Salah, what are the prerequisites? And, and perhaps what's holding businesses back from applying these new techniques? So I think the prerequisites are definitely having uh, your data in good order, having it well governed and managed. Um, and then I think it's all about finding the people that love data in your organization. There's always people like that. Um, so identifying them and giving them the opportunity to, to grow and to learn new things um, and seeing to it that, that they have the, the support from the organization, from management, and from, from their teams that they can really sort of learn to build new tools and also roll them out into the organization. Perhaps a, a difficult question. Could, could wrong AI application lead to, to unexpected consequences in systems with implicit bias? Uh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think one of the things that makes it easy to sleep at night uh, today uh, is that the, 
the sort of maturity of, of using data for AI is, is still not there. Um, it's still quite difficult to build a real machine learning algorithm that's sustainable, um, which means that, that it's not sort of, the risk of doing really stupid stuff isn't really as big as it would be if it was just sort of uh, pulling algorithms from a shelf and putting them into production. Uh, you have to do a lot of work. Because, um, I mean, the, the machine learns what the data tells it um, and no more. Uh, it doesn't have creativity in that sense. Um, so if you give it bad data, then it's going to take bad decisions. Mm. David, how has AI changed the way compliance professionals are trained? Well, <laughs> it has definitely changed it because if you think about it, compliance officers, compliance professionals are at the heart of any deployment or operationalization of AI. So in a, in a certain effect, effectively, they're the key drivers of innovation when it comes to AI across an organization. So when it comes to training, it is critical and important to train them to balance between the regulatory compliance side of the house and the innovation side of the house. Does everyone have to be an AI expert nowadays? I, I get asked that quite regularly. I absolutely don't think everyone has to become an expert in AI. However, there is a necessity to at least understand how the usage and the outcomes of AI can help in every single process across an organization. But expert, pay me not. Salah, from a regulatory perspective, have regulators been supporting these new initiatives? Um, I think so. I think this is kind of, uh, it's been breaking a little bit new ground um, and it's taken a little, little bit of time to, to find the, the good way of collaborating and, and learning together um, because I think that's sort of the key that everybody understands what we're doing and, and we can keep the trust. This is a the very difficult question to answer now. I'm going to give it back to Salah. Where do you think we are within our AI journey? Is there much more to come? Oh yes. Uh, I think we're just at the beginning. I mean. Um, getting AI to be an integrated part of uh, our daily business, that's sort of the, the holy grail. That's what, what I'm really hoping for. Um, and the only way to do that is to, to allow our employees to be part of the journey. And David, uh, as we've been discussing, AI is clearly the way forward in augmenting uh, compliance processes. But how far can this actually go? Will we ever see an end to human intelligence making the final decision on this? I think in no matter how far we can or in fact should go, it's, it's critical to make sure that artificial intelligence, AI, is always there to augment and support human decision by design. What I mean by that is that it's critical for us at this juncture to remember that when we're going about designing algorithms, we're not designing to replace us because then if we do that, it's kind of expected that at some point in the future, decisions may be done by machines. So, we need to make sure it's augmented intelligence, there to support humans' decision. Well, I think we've taken quite enough of your time. There is so much more to see at Cybos 2019. Thank you very much for joining us. Salah Franzen, Group Chief Data Scientist at SEB, and David Hardoon, Special Advisor, Artificial Intelligence at the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.